In this video, we're going to be covering parabolas. Just a quick disclaimer, this is the second of two videos I'm making on parabolas. In this video, we're going to be talking about the vertex form of a parabola, and in the previous video, which I'll have linked in the top right of the screen right now, we talked about the basic characteristics of parabolas, as well as the standard form of parabola. So definitely check that video out if you're interested. And with that being said, let's jump right in. In the last video, we talked about the standard form of a parabola y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now let's discuss the vertex form of a parabola, which is the following. y is equal to a times x minus h whole squared plus k. Now, in vertex form, a serves the same purpose as it does in standard form. You can use it to determine whether your parabola opens upward or downward, and you can also use it to find the focal distance. But here's the main benefit of vertex form. Recall that when we were working with standard form, to find the coordinates of the vertex, we had to use the formula minus b over 2a to get the x value, and then we have to plug in that x value into the equation to get the corresponding y value. But finding the vertex of a parabola in vertex form is a lot easier, as the name suggests. All it is, is the point h comma k, where h and k are from the vertex form. The reason this is the case is because h and k represent horizontal and vertical shifts from the origin. And the last thing I want to touch on about vertex form in general is how to find the y-intercept. Recall that the y-intercept is where x is equal to 0. So if you want to find the y-value for the y-intercept, then all you need to do is plug in 0 for x. Alright, now let's talk about how you can convert from standard to vertex form and vice versa. If you want to convert a parabola from standard form to vertex form, then you need to use the completing the square method. And let's do one example of this. Let's say we have the parabola y is equal to negative 4x squared plus 8x minus 2. And let's say we want to convert it to vertex form. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how the completing the square method works, but here's what the process looks like. Let's start off by factoring out a negative 4 from the first two terms in our equation. If we do that, we have negative 4 times x squared. If you factor out a negative 4 from plus 8x, you get minus 2x. Then let's leave some room for another term, and then we have negative 2. Now here's the key to this method. We want to find a constant term to put after this negative 2x to make the terms inside the parentheses a squared, something in the form of x minus h whole squared. And the way you find out what that term is is by taking the coefficient of the x term, so in this case that's negative 2, then you divide that term by 2, and then square that result. So whatever the coefficient of the x squared term is, divide that by 2 and square the result. In this case we get negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1, and negative 1 whole squared is 1. So we can add 1 here, but we have to be careful here. At this point, this expression and this expression are not equal. And the reason for that is the plus 1 we added. So we have to find some way to counteract that addition to make sure those two expressions remain the same. So we added 1 inside the parentheses, but in reality what we're doing to the expression as a whole is subtracting 4, because all of the terms in the parentheses are multiplied by negative 4. To counteract the subtraction of negative 4, we can add 4 outside the parentheses, so the net addition is 0. And now the two expressions that I underlined before are equal. So we have negative 4, and since we added that plus 1, we can simplify the terms inside the parentheses to x minus 1 whole squared, and then outside the parentheses we have negative 2 plus 4, so plus 2. Now our equation has been converted to vertex form, and recall that in vertex form, the vertex is just h comma k. In this case, h is 1 and k is 2, so the vertex of this parabola as we showed in the previous video with the longer method, is the point 1, 2. Alright, so that was an example of converting from standard to vertex form. Now, converting the other direction from vertex to standard form is a lot simpler. All you need to do to go in this direction is expand the squared term out. And that process is pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to do an example of that. But we will do an example of graphing a parabola given in vertex form. Alright, so here's the example. We want to do a complete sketch of the parabola y is equal to 2 times x plus 1 whole squared plus 1. Let's start off by finding the vertex of this parabola. 
Since this parabola is given in vertex form, the coordinates of the vertex are just going to be h comma k. And your first instinct might be, well, h is 1 and k is 1, so the vertex should just be the point 1 comma 1. But that is incorrect. Let's recall exactly what vertex form is. It's y is equal to a times x minus h whole squared plus k. In the general form, we have x minus a constant whole squared, but in the equation we're working with, we have x plus a constant whole squared. So let's try to write this equation in a way that resembles the general form more closely. And so what we have is y is equal to 2 times x minus minus 1 whole squared plus 1. Keep in mind that this equation and the equation we started with are the exact same because the negative of negative 1 is just plus 1. And when you write the equation in this format, it becomes a lot more clear that h is negative 1 and that k is 1. So our vertex, in reality, is at the point negative 1, comma 1. Now that we've found the vertex of the problem, let's work on finding the y-intercept. We know that the y-intercept is going to be something in the form of 0, comma, and then some y-value. But how do we find what that value is? Recall from the previous slide that you can find the y-value of the y-intercept by plugging in 0 into your equation because the y-intercept is where x is 0. If we do that, we get 2 times x, which is 0, plus 1, whole squared, plus 1, which is 2 times 1 squared, so just 2, plus 1, which is 3. So the y-intercept has the coordinates 0, 3. Now that we have the vertex and the y-intercept, we can draw a rough sketch of the problem the vertex is at the point negative 1, comma 1, and the y-intercept is at the point 0, comma 3, which is right here. And we can use the fact that parabolas are symmetric to our advantage here. Our vertex is at the point negative 1, comma 1, and when we take a one unit step to the right from our vertex, our y-value becomes 3. That means that when we take a one unit step to the left from our vertex, our y-value must be 3 as well, so this point must also be on our curve. Just based on these three points, we can see that the parabola will open upward. Another way to justify this would be by looking at a. a is equal to 2 for this equation, which is positive, which means the parabola will open upward and the vertex will be a minimum. So if we sketch in our curve... Alright, so there you have a rough sketch of the curve. Now let's find out the coordinates for the focus and the equations for the directrix and the axis of symmetry. Remember, the equation a is equal to 4p still applies here. We know that a is equal to 2, so 2 is equal to 4p. If we divide by 4 on both sides, we get that p is equal to 1 half, which means the focus is 1 half above the vertex. The vertex has the coordinates negative 1, comma 1, which means the coordinates of the focus must be negative 1, comma 3 halves. So the focus would be approximately here. If the focus is 1 half above the vertex, then the directrix must be 1 half below the vertex which means it's this line right here. The horizontal line, y is equal to 1 half. And once again, the reason we know this is because all points on the parabola must be an equal distance away from the focus and the directrix. If the focus is 1 half away from the vertex, then the directrix must be as well. Finally, we want to include the axis of symmetry, which is this vertical line right here. Remember that the axis of symmetry always has the same x value as the vertex. So in this case, that's going to be the line x is equal to negative 1. So there you have a complete sketch of the parabola 2 times x plus 1 whole squared plus 1. Alright, so that's it for this video. If it did help you out at all, please be sure to leave a like, and if you want to be notified when I post the rest of the videos in this course, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.